Now that we have the ability to detect when we hit an enemy through our sword, let's go ahead and start working on our damage system. Now for this damage system, we don't want it to be unique and specific to just attacking enemies. We want to be able to attack anything in our environment that could be damageable. So to do that, we're going to create what's called an interface. And an interface is basically like a contract that gets attached to an object and it says, hey, you must use this function. And that function for us is going to be damage. And basically what's going to happen is if, if we swing our sword and we detect that you have this interface implemented, we're just going to call that function damage. And then whatever object has that damage implementation is going to then handle the behavior. To get started, we need to create a new C -sharp script. Right click your scripts folder create and let's create a new C sharp script and we're going to call this I damageable with a capital ID. The reason for this is that this is the traditional syntax for an interface. We use capital I to specify it's an interface and then Pascal casing just like we would for defining a class. So here we have I damageable and typically you use the word able at the end. And what we're going to do is open this up. And let's go ahead and straighten up our script. We're going to remove void update and void start. And right now we have our public class idamageable, which inherits from mono behavior. This class is not going to inherit from anything. It's going to be just its own class. And even further, it's not going to be a class at all. It's going to be an interface. We're going to change the public class idamageable to public interface idamageable. Now, this interface acts as a form of, of a contract. Basically, what's going to happen here is we're going to define what an idamageable interface is. And any object that we want to apply this to is going to have to implement these methods. So let's say for a damageable, to, to define an idamageable contract, what are the required traits or rules to this contract? Let's say you must have a health. So here we can say int health. And then also, let's say that you must use a function called damage. So here we can say void damage. And there's no implementation in interfaces. It's very similar to how we forced an implementation in our abstract class by using an abstract method. So here we have void damage. Now, one interesting thing here about this is right now it's giving us an error. And if I go into Unity, it's going to compile. You can't use fields. Interfaces cannot contain fields or constants. Those are variables. Um, your traditional field type variables. Instead, we have to actually use what's called properties. Properties are like variables, but they have getters and setters. Now, a getter and setter, just to give you a quick example here, is if I hop into our attack class here, if I type transform.position, you'll notice here that the tooltip, well, I'm sorry, if I type transform.position, the tooltip here says the position of the transform world space. And notice how it has this bracket here, get and set. That's a property. This means that I can get the position of my transform and I can set the position. Essentially, that's what we're creating. Inside of our damageable contract, we want to be able to get the health value and set the health value. So here we're going to say int health and we have to use get and set. This is, a, this is called an auto property. We're going to save this and now we can go ahead and make use of our interface. So right now we have a contract called idamageable that says you must implement a health property and a damage method. If we save this, we can head back into Unity. We have no errors and what we can do now is actually make use of this. So how do we use the interface? We need to implement it onto whoever we want to be able to use this contract. So if we have a box, a crate we want to hit, anything our sword is going to hit is going to basically implement the I damageable interface. So let's start with our enemies. You'll see here that our individual enemies here for our moss giant skeleton and spider, let's go ahead and give them their unique implementations of damage. Now if they were going to be, we're going to do this two ways. We can choose to do this on the enemy script, but then they're going to have the shared functionality of it. And maybe we want it to be individual functionality. Like maybe the spider has very different damage logic than the moss giant and so forth. So we're actually gonna do this individually for the monsters. So let's open up the moss giant. And in here we have moss giant inherits enemy. 
Well, to add an implementation of an interface, all we have to do is say comma implements I damage. So we say Moss Giant inherits enemy comma I damageable. Now, one thing to note here is that you can only implement, you can only inherit from one class, but you can implement as many interfaces as you want. So if we had 10 different interfaces, I can implement them just by simply separating by comma. So let's remove this comma here. And here we have Moss Giant inherits enemy and it implements the I damageable. Now you'll see here that it's giving me an error. And if I save this, the reason why it's giving me an error is because we're not abiding by the contract. The contract says we need that interface and we need that damage method. If we look in the console here, it's gonna say exactly that. Moss Giant does not implement interface member I damageable dot health I damageable dot health the get and set those that's our property and then the damage method. So to solidify this contract, there's two ways to do this. We can right click this, quick actions, and it's going to say implement, implement interface. If you hit that, it's automatically going to create a property for the health. We can get the value of our health as well as set it, or we can use, and it will also give us the damage method. Now the alternative method here is to delete this and simply just create an auto property. If we don't wanna do any custom implementation code on our health when we receive it and set it, then we can just simply type public int health and we can turn it into an auto property for get and set. Now that we have that, we can then create our damage method. So here we're going to have, it looks like it's complaining about something. Oh, I'm missing a semicolon after set. So make sure you follow that syntax. And then here we're going to create our public void damage. As long as we have these two properties and methods, we are okay. So down here, after void in it, I'm going to say public void damage. We save this, and you'll see here that now there's going to be no more errors. Go back into Unity, let it compile, and now we have no errors. All right. So our Moss Giant right now basically is, is implementing this iDamageable interface. We just forced upon our Moss Giant, he's gonna have some health and he's gonna have a damage property. So one of the things with this health here is that our enemy class has a health property already, right? We pre-planned that. So basically what we're ensuring here though is that for this I damageable contract, it's its own entity, it's its own thing that says, hey, if I'm moving onto this object, you must have this. For instance, a box. We're going to provide the box or the chest, whatever you can destroy in our game, with a health and a damage method. So for this, it's okay that we also have the enemy one, because that's the one we're ideally going to be using. We just had to meet the guidelines of the contract, and we will be making use of this health. We're going to assign this health property to our enemy health. So, and we would do that in our initialization function. So for our Moss Giant here, we would go ahead and we would type base.init to initialize everything else. And then here we're going to say our health property equals our health. And if you want, if you want to, to make it more clear, you could say base.health. That way now our property is being used and it's not feeling useless. So we'll get to that again when we get into the actual damage capabilities. But for now, let's continue implementing this interface on our other enemies. So let's hop into the skeleton and we're going to implement the I damageable interface. You'll see here the tooltip's gonna help us out and it's gonna error because we need those two methods. So here we have the option of using quick actions or implementing the interface or simply typing out what's required in the contract. So we need public int health and it's an auto property, so get set. The difference between an auto property and a regular property is the default implementation, which is what you saw here by opening this up. So if I remove this health here, and if I implement, this is what a traditional property looks like. It's the public int health with the getter and setter and that you can execute some code when that logic is called. So for us though, we just wanna use a public int health and an auto property, get set. Ideally, you can think of a property as just a traditional field in this case. Here, we're gonna take the damage function, 
and let's put it underneath put it underneath our init method and lastly we're going to select our spider and we're going to do the same thing we're going to implement the i damage avoid interface and now each one individually is going to have this damage method and when we swing our sword we're going to check do they implement I damageable? If they do, I don't care what I hit, I just know that it can be damaged and we're gonna call the damage function. So I hope you see how this creates a very modular system for us. So here, public override void init, we need our int, public int health, and that's going to be a property. And then right below our init method, we're going to create our damage function. And we'll save this and we are good to go now real quickly before i end this video i do want to demonstrate that you could modify this even further by adding parameters for instance if we wanted to include a damage amount like when we call this function we want to pass in a damage amount and damage something by that well right now this doesn't implement the contract and you're going to get an error it says spider does not implement interface member i damageable if you want to include that value of an int here what you can do is you can go to your iDamageable interface and we can basically say in here int damage amount. And if we save that and now hop back into our spider, watch what happens if we don't implement it like that. You'll see here that it's going to error because we don't implement damage int. It's looking for an int. And if I actually write out the tooltip here, it should help us with int damage amount and it actually it's not going to help us but it is the same so here we have damage and damage amount and it now matches what's in the contract which is just an int so you can see here it's looking for a damage method that takes an int parameter and for our spider we now meet the contract the error is gone however on our skeleton the error is there and to get rid of it we have to say int damage amount save that and now the error goes away. So for our game though, we're gonna have a very simple damage system. We're not gonna be modifying it based on the attacks. So we're just going to simply say damage. I and mean, if we want to, we can change it later. So we'll go into our skeleton here, remove that, make it just damage. You can remove the throw new exception, go into the spider, remove the damage and go into the moss giant, make sure it's okay. All right, we are good to go. So in the next coming videos, we're going to set up the damage system.